Hey everyone, it's Emily. Today's video is going to be my top 18 books that I'm hoping to read in 2018. Basically a bunch of books that I'm excited to read. There's a mix of quite a few things. There's some YA, some adults. There is a mix of nonfiction, sci-fi, fantasy. There's a few like literally fiction and things I don't read a lot of but I'm hoping to do so this year. Hopefully I'll have time to read all of them. So let's go through them because there's 18. The first book is going to be something that everyone's going to be very excited that I'm finally reading including me, obviously, and it is a wife and to see duology and are you ready for this? In 2018, I want to read the Six of Crows duology by Leigh Bardugo. I'm showing the first book, but basically I'm hoping to read both, hopefully. In December, I finally finished the Grisha trilogy, so I wanted to continue that world. It's the same universe, same magical system, which I loved, but it's a different story that is apparently even better. We shall see if that's the case in my opinion. But one of the things I liked the most in that world was actually some characters and apparently it's going to be a little bit the same thing. Even though it's action-based uh, book, there's going to be a lot of characters that I will be hopefully enjoying. At least according to the few people that I know that read those. So very excited to finally be reading this. I know everyone is going to be very excited that I'm also reading it. I actually did add this to my January TBR, so if everything goes well, I might actually end up reading it this month. It wouldn't be a good reading year if I wasn't reading at least one Brendan Sanderson book because he's one of my favorite authors. If you like fantasy, you just have to read at least one of his books. And I wanted to continue in the Mistborn series. If you don't know, the Mistborn series is hard to explain. There's going to be four different series in it. The first trilogy is out and completed. This is part of the second series. There's going to be four books and then it's going to be continuing. There's three that are out. I do own those and I want to read them this year. Does that make sense? Basically the stories kind of build up on each other and they're a little further and further in time. And I absolutely love the magic system, the world building, the ending in that series, which is mind blowing. So I'm curious to see how the magic system will actually uh, act in that uh, cowboy kind of kind of Western type of world. So I'm very excited to continue in that world because it's one of my favorite series of all time. So I can't wait. Another series that I'm hoping to continue, and I've been asked so many times if I was planning on continuing because I read the first book, which you barely can't see, Red Rising, in 2016. So it's been almost two years, and I did enjoy it. It's kind of a mix of like Hunger Games on Mars and Game of Thrones. That's kind of how I would describe it. And I did like it, but I don't feel like I was liking it as much as everyone else, so kind of took my time to continue, but... In 2018, I'm hoping to read Golden Sun by Pierce Brown, which is the second book in the Red Rising uh, series. So it is a sci-fi adult, although it's kind of on the verge of why, at least for the first book in my opinion. But I'm just hoping to finally continue and hopefully I'm going to be enjoying it as much as everyone else. I know there's another book coming out from this author, but I'm not sure if it's in the same universe or not. But I wanted to just, you know, catch up a little bit and be able to continue reading his books. Because I did like the writing, it's just... I wasn't 100% sold on the story. The next book is on so many people's list of like favorite books of all time, especially like literally fiction. And I just wanted to finally get to it because I've heard so many people mention it. And it is The Book Thief by Marcus Susak. I haven't seen a movie because I do own that uh, movie die edition. I haven't seen the movie, haven't read the book yet, but I'm very excited because mostly because some people were telling me that death is actually one of the characters, which I mean, that should be something that is more popular. I feel like I need to read more of those. Actually, if you have any recommendation, please let me know. But I know you're also following a young main character who basically steals books and prevents people from burning them during uh, World War II. Usually I'm not super big on like historical fiction or anything that is more like historical. <laughs> Let's just say it. So I'm hoping that I will actually be enjoying this because a lot of people say that it breaks their heart and once I'm in the mood for the tears, I'll definitely pick that one up. I'm gonna have to hide her face because my camera keeps focusing on it. I've been mentioning a lot that I want to read more nonfiction, especially science related one because I love them, but for some reason I don't pick them up often. Probably because I need to be in the perfect mood for them, I can't be too tired. But whenever I do mention that I want to read more nonfiction, everyone seems to recommend this one specifically to me, or like everyone, it's very broad. I feel like it would work for most people, and it is. A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. And I am finishing currently uh, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. And I was kind of curious how much they would have in common because the titles are kind of similar. But this one is more science related. Basically in the back it says, this is science like you've never learned it in school, which 
I mean, I'm all for it. I do have a small background in science. I'm very curious to learn more about it. So why not this one? It isn't super recent. It was published in 2003, so I don't know how much it will affect the content if it's still relevant or not. I'm assuming it probably is because it's probably very vague, but I'm curious to just see it as a base and then see and just increase my knowledge based on that because I know some of the nonfiction books that are supposed to be somewhat for beginners can be a little harsh if you don't have any background in science. So I'm curious to see if this would be like the most basic one and then I can recommend it for other people that are curious to just start somewhere. So this book I did include in my most anticipated books of 2018, but I just really wanted to include it here because I'm really hoping to read it this year. It's not out yet, but it is coming up very soon. The first book in that series although they are all standalone, is My Lady Jane by Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. Basically, these authors do something that is so interesting to me. They take a Jane in history and they kind of switch up her story and make it more fun. In 2018, they're coming out with My Plain Jane, which look at that cover. Like, how gorgeous is this? It's just amazing. I can't wait to own this. But they are taking Jane Eyre, which I did read in 2017, so perfect timing. And they are rewriting her story, kind of make it more fun and more fantastical adding like fantasy elements in there and then just basically making it more, a little bit more like type of humor of like Princess Bride type of thing. So I'm just really curious to see what they're gonna do with her. Cause I did enjoy what they did with uh, My Lady Jane. Although I did feel towards the end, it was kind of getting, you know, the story was lacking a little bit of breath towards the end, but I am still very excited to see what's gonna happen with Jane Eyre. I finally want to get to this book. This is The Savage Song by Victoria Schwab, who also is one of my favorite authors. I feel like her writing is always beautiful. And this is a YA duology that she came out with recently-ish. The second book just came out last year, I believe, A Dark Duet. And I've yet to read them, so it's time for me to do so. This is a YA fantasy universe where there's two sides. There is the monsters and then the humans, and every time people do something bad, more monsters are created, something like that. I can't wait to see how it goes. My library has some really, really great sales books for like three, four dollars. So I always go crazy during those sales, but they kind of suck whenever you actually want to use them to borrow a book because you have to wait forever. And one book that I literally waited a year and I was still like a hundred and something on the wailing list and I ended up just buying it from Book Outlet is a book that I'm hoping to finally get to this year because I couldn't last year and it is the Woman Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware, which I did read in a dark, dark wood last year and I did like it, but it wasn't anything mind blowing or anything that will uh, stay with me and that will have to recommend to everyone. I feel like it's something that is kind of forgettable. Like at this point, I don't remember much of the story, so it kind of just says it all. But this seems to be something that people liked even more. It's a thriller. I don't know more about it than, you know, it's a woman, Kevin 10. <laughs> but I do really like the cover. I think it's really beautiful. Hopefully it will be worth all that waiting, but I'm probably going to keep this towards the fall. I tend to read thriller mystery horror more during the fall and that just overdo it, get sick of it, and then stop for a few months, which I'm kind of in that phase right now. But once I do I feel the need to start again, I definitely want to get to read this one and see if it was worth all that hype and weight. Next book is something I've seen a lot of people like best of from last year and the year before because it came out in 2016. I don't know much about it because it is literally fiction, which I feel like contemporary in general, there's not a lot of like story happening, especially if it's more like slice of life type of book. So knowing anything kind of is a little bit of a spoiler in my opinion, but I want to read The Unseen World by Liz Moore, which all I know is you're following a young main character and her dad is kind of a little on the eccentric side and she's super smart, I believe. And I just thought I would give it a shot because I don't read a lot of those books, but whenever they are raved a lot about, I just want to see for myself, oh, maybe this one will be the exception to my eh general rule about contemporary. Hopefully it doesn't attract a camera. Probably will. Yep, yep, it's doing it. This why a fantasy series has been raved about by a lot of people that I trust, even people that usually don't read why much. So I wanted to finally get to it. It's a trilogy. The first book is The Queen of Teeling by Erica Johansson. And look at that cover, how gorgeous is this? And even the spine, gotta admit partially why I got it. But I finally own the trilogy, so it was, it's about time that I finally read it. All I know is that you're following a young princess that is learning how to become a queen and it's a fantasy universe, kind of all I need to, to know. But I can't wait to see how I'm going to be feeling about the trilogy because everyone seemed to absolutely love it, except for the ending of the third book, which I love whenever something is a little bit more controversial. You can decide if you also hate it or if you actually love it and you feel kind of a little bit alone there. I love it. So we'll be reading this this year. I've been meaning to read more very popular, not necessarily on booktube, but just in the world in general, uh, 
fantasy and sci-fi series and one of the fantasy one that has been mentioned to me quite a bit is anything by Robin Hobb. So the first book that you have to start with is Assassin's Apprentice and what I love about that fantasy world because I don't know anything about it is the fact that she has a character that she's using in most of her books and you're following him as a kid and then growing up and now in her more recent books he's an adult like 50s I believe something like that which I think it's fascinating because I feel like very often you're following the same character and they're not necessarily growing up and then you follow them for like a hundred books. But in this world he's actually growing up. Can't wait to uh, actually see it. I know I've been warned that uh, my heart is going to be broken into little pieces so I'm ready for it and when I'm in the mood I will definitely pick this up and if I like it, which I probably will, I will be reading all her books. <laughs> Very much hoping I'm going to be liking her writing. In the more sci-fi side of the classic books that I need to read, I wanted to finally get to Hyperion by Dan Simmons. And this book, I did read the first chapter in a try a chapter book tag where you like read the first chapter of like five books and then you decide which one you are in the mood to read. And this one, I did enjoy the writing, but it was much more difficult than I'm used to and it was a little bit more slow based and I didn't want to feel too slumpy-ish, which I kind of was a little bit in a reading slump. The writing was beautiful and you're starting to just learn the story of multiple characters and then you're gonna like get to something, but it was just the beginning. So I can't wait to actually finish this book and decide if I like it as much as everyone else because once again, this is raved about a lot and it's on a lot of lists of like best sci-fi ever of all time, mind blowing thing. So hoping it will also blow my mind. I have been wanting to read more Margaret Atwood books because everyone has been raving about her Handmaid's Tale, which it was the first book actually I read last year. So I wanted to read more of her books and this one seems like something I will be into. It is Oryx and Creek, which is a sci-fi like post-apocalyptic book, which yes, please give it to me. It is a trilogy, but I do own the first book. I actually got this at my library sale. It probably was owned by Marlene. <laughs> But all I know is that there's two people, kind of last people on earth type of thing, which very into that trope and yeah, want to read it. Next book is also coming out in 2018. It is part of the Wayfarers series. It is like a series, but it's mostly like companion novels to each other where you're following the same characters, but it's not like a proper story. And the first book was The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. And the third book I'm going to be putting on the screen, but it is a very character driven uh, sci-fi, adult sci-fi series. And it's so good. Like it will like the feels, the characters are everything you care about. Uh, they will make you laugh, they will make you smile, their friendship are great. And it's also very good if you're someone that likes um, diverse characters, it's so great to like see them because you're following some humans but also a lot of aliens and it, it's so fascinating to see how their culture, their like own alien civilization uh, kind of interact with each other. and. Also there's also some uh, artificial intelligence and like relationship with you, between all of that is just I'm all over the place, but basically it's great. And if you like character driven books, especially if you read more like contemporary and you want to, you know, dip your toe into sci-fi, definitely recommend this series. I am very much enjoying myself and can't wait to continue. So as I mentioned, I wanted to read more nonfiction about science and I have been, actually I started reading, listening to it as an audiobook and I'm loving it so far. And it is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. It's a nonfiction about a uh, life story of Henrietta Lacks. And basically, if you don't know anything, she was a woman of color who uh, basically they used uh, her cells to create so many things in science because they harvested basically some of her uh, cancerous uh, cells from her cervix, kind of without her knowledge. And they are using this to find things like polio vaccines and even nowadays it's like used and sold and she has made no money nor family like they can't even afford healthcare but everyone else is making money out of it and it's kind of book giving her credits for all of these things and so far I'm really enjoying it. I definitely recommend it if you want to read more nonfiction because it's a really great read. The audiobook is fantastic by the way. The narrator, her voice is just such a joy to listen to. I feel like I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks and very hit and miss, but that one is really good. And I like the book too because you have pictures of her because obviously everyone is mentioning herself by Ella, which is like the first letters of her first name and last name. So Ella, she kind of has like lost her face. So I think it's really great to give her credit for everything and just including pictures of everything in there. So trying to go fast because it's been a long video, but this has been really great so far and I can't wait to continue. We're down to last three books. So the first one I wanna mention is Traitor's Blade by Sebastiana Castell, which is basically a, an adult uh, fantasy series um, where the characters are a little bit like the Three Musketeers. The series is called the Great Coats series and 
people seem to be enjoying it. I've been hearing more and more about it on booktube and I just want to read it for myself. Another more like classic sci-fi, although not mentioned much on booktube, is the Culture series, which the first book is considered Flibus by Ian M. Banks. And there's quite a few books in that series and I believe they're all standalones, although maybe semi-related. I'm not sure, but I do own the first two books and I'm curious to see if I'm gonna like it as much as everyone else, once again. Because I have seen this a lot on books of like best of, you know, from sci-fi. And then last but not least, it's another uh, science nonfiction and it is Pale Blue Dot by Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan is known for a lot of his nonfiction about science that are super easy to comprehend. You don't need to be a genius in science to understand him. There is a TV show at Cosmos, which I feel like most people might have heard of if you haven't seen it. Totally recommend you do so. Loved it. So I wanted to read more. Basically, this is just about... Uh, the human future in space and it is pretty old but I think it is still quite relevant and I just wanted to read the old stuff and then you know build up from there so so that's it those are the 18 books that I'm hoping to read in 2018 I do recommend checking out I did do a video about the big books that I'm hoping to read in 2018 because it's gonna be a challenge but it's gonna be a lot of fun don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it don't forget to let me know in the comment section what books you are hoping to read in 2018 don't forget to subscribe and I'll miss any future videos and I will see you in my next one. Bye.